Just watching him in the postseason uh, of last year, okay. he got more comfortable, it seemed, and he's had a fantastic year for Philadelphia. You think you'd be surprised at all if we're back for the Fall Classic in Philadelphia, Lauren, Robert? No. No mm -mm. chance, right? No. Braves got their hands full. Whoever the Phillies are going to play in that first round, could be the Cubs, could be the Diamondbacks, we'll see when the dust settles. But they get past that first round. They know they can stare the Braves in the face. They do it every year, and they got the talent. The lineup is littered with stars. I love watching the Philadelphia Phillies play. Every guy who comes up has got a swag about him and has a different skill set. It's pretty awesome. And Nick's no different. We've watched him grow from Detroit Tigers, get traded to the Cubbies, little time in Cincinnati, on down the line. And he, he admitted he came in last year, scuffled a little bit, adjusting, but not the case anymore. So I want to dive in, give him some love, play some sound, show the good things he's been doing. Let's get into the front end real quick, because I love his move at the plate. That is not something that you would teach. That's probably been his move since he's 12 years old. But man, he puts himself in a position to be successful with the bat head every day. So pause this before we bring up the sound, Broid. Bring up his season stats for me first. 272 batting average, which is nice in today's game. Home runs 27.99. He's going to hit potentially 30 bombs, drive in 100 RBIs. Okay? And he's getting hot at the right time. And the beauty of Nick being so honest in his, in his comments after post-game interviews and stuff like that is he really takes you inside what he's thinking and what a lot of guys are thinking. I came up with the Atlanta Braves, and all I knew was winning division titles and getting to the postseason. And when I went to other organizations that didn't share that same culture or couldn't get, I didn't understand it. You were playing the 162 just to get back to October because if you play one inning in October, that's why the season's played, period. I know you got to make money, you know, provide for your family, all that good stuff, entertain the masses, but you want October baseball. Take a listen to this last postseason. You know, a lot of times I, I have troubles keeping, like, attention during the regular season every day, nine innings. But, like, with the postseason, this, this kind of baseball is incredible. You don't have a choice but to just be locked in, you know, watching swings, watching the balls come off the bat. And I think that's just kind of why I'm playing better. Pause that real quick. What an honest comment. 162, all the travel, day games, night games, different sides of the country. There are moments where your concentration and focus can get a little lazy but you get everyone's best down the stretch. You're seeing it on a nightly basis, and that's what I love. And I love his hack right here. Let, let's go through some bombs, Tw part of the 27 homers. Mackenzie Gore, heater in. Run that back for me real quick. He's gonna try and pound it, pause it. It's all about execution, but he doesn't come off his plan, okay? He knows that Mackenzie Gore is gonna have a tough time getting this, driving this fastball inside on him. So he is gonna sit middle away, stay out over, knowing if I think big part of the field, if he doesn't execute, I got him. He leaves this middle cut, driven right center for a bomb in Philly. His approach is clean. He doesn't have a ton of hand movement. We're going to bring up. But what I love about him is his bat path. Keep it going. Mackenzie Gore again. Same thing. Doesn't execute a heater in. Nick doesn't deviate from what he's trying to accomplish. I'm going to put the bat in his zone for an extended period of time. There's another perfect example. Run that back. If that pitch, two-seamer 97, is executed where this catcher wants, it's probably a ground out to third. But Nick is dialed in. He doesn't think you can hit that spot. I'm going to stay up the middle the other way, knowing I got popped to all fields. Bathead drops in the zone. Max Freed. And I know the numbers support, and we're going to bring up a few numbers. He's got the highest batting average on for right-handed hitters on pitches inside part of the plate. But that kind of brings me back. And what does that do? Pause that real quick. What does that do? He handles that pitch. Michael Young in Texas used to talk about the easiest pitch for me to drive up the middle the other way is the pitch middle, middle in. So that's what Nick does. He stays hot on that middle in sinker, knowing that if my hands are right, I can drive it to all parts. 
the bad angles in perfect rhythm, and then run this back for me real quick. You hang a breaking ball, and my bat path is nice, then I just take that to left center. Bring up the two boards for me, Broid. Highest first pitch swing rate, so he's coming out of the gate. Corey Seager, Tatis, Castellanos, 47.7% of the time. Bring up what he hammers on the inner half of the plate. Thought this was interesting, because he looks like he's sitting middle away, but you can cover in. 410 batting average for right-handed hitters on the inner third of the zone. All right, let's get into a couple side angles. Where am I at? Am I getting heavy? 18, we're good. <laughs> All right. Mm, just enjoy that. And then here's his homers over the weekend. Bryce Ooh. Elder yesterday. Breaking ball, like I said, he's thinking gap to gap. Staying inside the baseball. <laughs> Little slider middle part of the plate from Bryce Elder. Perfect position to hit. Again, it comes down to execution. Trying to throw him a front door cutter right there. Leaves it out over. And he hits his second homer. So what did he look like with Detroit when he first came into the big leagues? Ooh. Bring up the side by side. I love looking at how guys change differently. There's not much different hands wise. Run this. Leg kicks pretty similar. Maybe a little bit more aggressive in Philly. Bring up the one where he's with the Cubs. That's when he was feeling it. Ooh. I mean that thing is up almost to his belly button. But if it's timed up, like I said, I think the big thing for him is bat path. Watch the margin for error. I mean, he is in the zone a long time and stay. Pause this. As opposed to Luis Robert, you're going to see what I, what I mean by that is creating margin for error. Guys want to dump this barrel. That's a bad term, dump the barrel, but kind of put the barrel in the zone back here where they can kind of drag it through the strike zone the entire time. They can go right, center, and left. He's able to do that. Go back to, you got Luis Robert real quick. I want to make a point there. And then we'll get out. So pause. I want you to click this very slowly forward. Keep going. Keep going. Till that front foot lands and they start dropping their hands into the zone. Because there's different ways to do this, and I know why Nick's trying to create more margin for error. Keep coming. Right there. Back it up, too. Right there. They get to the same point, but you can tell he's hitting with more of his core and not let, let his hands are coming along for the ride. This is down. I'm creating with my core, and the hands are coming along for the ride. Where you can tell Luis Robert is more of a handsy thinking hitter where he's trying to take his hands directly down to the baseball. It's just two different philosophies, two great outfielders who can drive the ball out of the park, but Nick's having moments. Yeah, he's a money player. One of the swaggiest in the game, and the confidence just oozes off of him. And then the defensive play yesterday. I got it. How many people? 99% of the world's catching this baseball. And I know he's been questioned defensively at times, but he's had some moments in some big spots. Yesterday being one of them. Postseason last year against the Braves. Also game one of the World Series. We're going to have that one Game three, too. Game three as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of that money First player out. for this team. They got a bunch of them.